ಯಶೋದನಂದನ ಭ್ರಜ ಜನರಂಜನ ಯಮುನಥೀರಾಭನ ಯಮುನಥೀರಾಭನ ಜೈ ಹಾಧಮ್ಮ ಕುಂಜ ಬಿಹಾರಿ ಜೈ ಹಾಧಮ್ಮ ಕುಂಜ ಬಿಹಾರಿ ಗೋಪಿ ಜಾನ ಬಾಲಿರಿ ಬರಿ ಗೋಪಿ ಜಾನ ಬಾಲಿರಿ ಬರಿ ಯಶೋದನಂದನ ಭ್ರಜ ಜನರಂಜನ ಯಶೋದನಂದನ ಭ್ರಜ ಜನರಂಜನ ಯಮುನ ಕೀರ ಭನ ಚಾರಿ ಯಮುನ ಕೀರ ಭನ ಚಾರಿ ಜೈ ಹರಾಧಾಧ ಕುಂಜಿಹಾರಿ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಹಾ 
Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So this evening we're going to speak from the pastimes of Lord Krishna as described in Srila Prabhupada's Krishna book. Lord Krishna's pastimes take place in three different places, namely Vrindavan, Mathura and Dwarka. So in the evenings I, I want to focus mainly on the pastimes in Dwarka, but before that we want to describe how Krishna and how Krishna got to Dwarka. Hmm. So Krishna spent his childhood there in Vrindavan. We know that from his birth, Nanda uh, Vasudev brought Krishna over there to Nanda Maharaji's house and uh, Krishna wanted to be there in Vrindavan among the cowherd people and he spent something like the first 12 years of his manifest pastimes there in Vrindavan. So in the course of those 12 years, Kamsa had arranged different demons to go there to try to kill Lord Krishna. 
But Lord Krishna, of course, defeated all of them and liberated them. And the final pastimes in Vrindavan, before Krishna goes to Mathura, there was the demon Kesi, who came in the form of the horse demon. And then there was another demon called Vyomasur, who came like a cowherd boy. Mm -hmm. Casey, the proud, the proud demon, came in this form of a horse, and it's very frightening, ferocious horse, big, powerful animal, and Lord Krishna had to face him. Mm. Finally, Lord Krishna uh, pushed his hand into the mouth of the horse demon and then Krishna made his hand very hot so it burned the mouth of the horse and then he expanded his arm so that the horse choked and so this way Casey died in great pain. And then Vyoma, Vyomasur, he was a powerful demon. He changed his form into that of a cowherd boy. And the cowherd boys, one day they were having a game. They were playing uh, thieves. Well, one group of boys, they were sheep. And another group of boys, they were the shepherds. And the other group of boys, they were the thieves. And they were coming to steal the sheep. So this day, they were playing a game. And this demon, Vyomasura, he took the form of one of the cowherd boys. So Vyomasura was taking kidnapping for three or four cowherd boys at a time. He'd kidnap them, take them away, and then he'd hide them in a cave and seal the cave with a big rock so they couldn't get out. And so it came, there was only four cowherd boys left. Uh, then Krishna realized what this demon was doing, and so he he fought with the demon and killed him. And and when he fought with the demon, the demon in, uh, assumed his rakshasa form, his terrible, gigantic form as a demon. <laughs> The Srimad Bhagavatam describes that Krishna killed him just like they kill an animal during sacrifice. When they sacrifice an animal in Vedic, uh, as a Vedic yaga, they will strangle the animal. So Krishna, Krishna strangled this demon. Mm -hmm. 
，形容 Krishna 杀死了六根苏拉，就像杀死祭祀场的一头动物。按照伟达祭祀呢，他们就会全部就会把这个动物就就呃捆绑起来，然后把他们祭祀祭祀掉。So in this way, Krishna liberated these different demons, who were all friends of Kamsa, who had all come with the intention of trying to kill Krishna. So the, all these friends of Kamsa were killed by Krishna, and Kamsa was completely frustrated. How he was ever going to kill Krishna? Because remember, from the very marriage of Vasudev and Devaki, at that time Kamsa was driving the chariot, taking Devaki, who was his sister. Taking her to Vasudev's home, when a voice from the sky appeared and said, "Kamsa, you are a fool. The eighth child of this girl is going to kill you." So initially, when Kamsa heard this, he grabbed Devaki. He grabbed his sister by the hair, and he was going to kill her. But Vasudev, who had just married her, appealed to him to save her life. So Kamsa was a powerful Kshatriya. Vasudev was also a Kshatriya, but he was not a Maharati. He was more of a politician. In other words, he was a good talker. So Vasudev pleaded with Kamsa that I promise you that. If Devaki gives birth to children, I will give you the children. So Kamsa accepted these words of Vasudev. He understood Vasudev is a very honest man, and he agreed. All right. When if Devaki gives birth to any children, you give them to me. <laughs> so it happened. Vasudev and Devaki were put into prison. After some time, you know what happened was, uh, Kamsa was. Worried about his own life because he he was always thinking the eighth child is going to kill me. So he put Vasudev and Devaki into his prison, and that way, whenever she gave birth to a child, he would take the child. <laughs> And Devaki, 
and Devaki went, gave birth one after another. The first six children, when she gave birth, Kamsa came, took them, killed them, one after another. So first six children were all brutally killed by Kamsa. You can understand what kind of person this Kamsa was. So the seventh child, when Devaki conceived the seventh child, it was arranged, the seventh child was actually Lord Balaram. And Lord Balaram appeared in the womb of Devaki and then transferred to the womb of Rohini. Rohini was another wife of Vasudev, but she was, in, she was not in the prison. Rohini was in the home of Nanda Maharaj. Mm. Mm. And so everyone thought Devaki had had a miscarriage, but actually what had happened was he just moved, the child had moved to the other, the womb of Rohini. Actually, Balaram's purpose in appearing is to prepare for the appearance of Lord Krishna. Lord Balaram comes first and makes sure everything is ready for Lord Krishna to come. Before the king comes, first of all, the king's ministers or the king's secretary will come. They'll make sure everything is ready for the king to come. So in the same way, Lord Balaram comes first. He makes sure everything is ready for Lord Krishna to come. So in this way, Lord Krishna appeared as eighth child, and after his birth, then Lord Krishna ordered Vasudev, take me to the home of Nanda Maharaj. And and although Vasudev was in the prison house of Kamsa, by the mystic power of Lord Krishna, it was arranged that Vasudev could go out and carry Lord Krishna across the Yamuna to Goku, to the home of Nanda Maharaj. And it was there. Rohini was also there. Lord Balaram had already appeared there. And Lord Krishna comes. And in this way, Lord Krishna and Balaram are together in Goku. And they can, have their, they can perform their Vrindavan pastimes. And they're there with all the cowherd people and all the cows and the cowherd boys and the cowherd girls and it's this is the 
the wonder, the wonderful place, Vrindavan, this is the supreme abode. So Kamsa was told by Narada Muni that, oh, the child who's going to kill you is already born some other place. So this made Kamsa very worried and so he was sending his demons everywhere. Go and kill all the young children born in the whole area. Kill all the young children. So these demons would go around, they kill, they kill the children of all the other demons. <laughs> they couldn't kill the children of the devotees. They couldn't go into Vrindavan and harm any of the devotees there because they are all protected by Lord Krishna. But by the power of Yoga Maya, the demons went and killed the children of the demons. So different demons were being killed by Lord Krishna in the forests of Vrindavan and Kamsa was beginning to realize that you know, this, this child in Vrindavan, he must be the one who is meant to kill me. So he told Akrura, you go to Vrindavan and bring Krishna here and tell him I've arranged special wrestling match for him. So Akrura is like uncle to Lord Krishna and then the Srimad Bhagavatam we're given a beautiful description of how Akrura comes to Vrindavan to bring Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram to Mathura. And they gave Akrura a new chariot. Akamsa had a new chariot for him because they're going to bring the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Swayam Bhagavan. So you don't just want to send an old chariot for him. They gave a very nice new chariot decorated with gold and so on. And Akrura went on that chariot and he brought, he went there to Vrindavan and he went to the home of Nanda and Yashoda. And there's a description of Akrura journeying to Vrindavan and all the way he's going from Mathura to Vrindavan, he's thinking, I'm so fortunate, I'm going to see the Supreme Lord. Even though I'm a messenger on behalf of Kamsa, I'm going on behalf of Kamsa, but I'm so fortunate, I'm going to be able to see the Supreme Lord himself.
，而这就是形容说，当啊哭了，去了他们的这一路上呢，他就在想，太幸运了，我就要见到是君主了。虽然我是代表康萨去的信使，但是我如此幸运，我得以见到至尊主本人。And when he came into Vrindavan, then he saw on the ground, he saw the footprints of Lord Krishna, because the lotus feet of Lord Krishna are decorated with all auspicious signs, and he could see on the ground, oh, the footprints of Lord Krishna. And when he saw the footprints, he fell on the ground and he rolled in that dust. 啊，忽然一进入本达门的时候，他在地上就看见了 Krishna 的足印。Krishna 的莲花足有很多吉祥的标记，而忽然看到地上这些 Krishna 的足印和那些标记的时候，他就直挺挺的倒在地上，开始在尘土当中打滚。There are many different auspicious signs on the lotus feet of Krishna, especially there is the The goad, which is used to control the elephant, because our mind is like an elephant, very stubborn. You know, you need this goad. You know, if you control an elephant, they have this sharp metal object, stick it in the elephant to get the elephant to to do what you want. They stick this metal thing into the because elephants are big bodies. They've got that thick skin. So they stick this thing into the elephant, and this way they control the elephant. So this is one of the symbols on the lotus feet of Krishna, because our mind is like that, like a stubborn elephant. Krishna 足上的吉祥的标记之一呢，就是控制大象的这个棍，赶象棒。我我们的心里特别顽顽固，固执。而在赶象棒上呢，就有这个金属的铁钉，必须让大象听话，因为大象的皮肤很厚，这个金属的铁钉呢，就能刺刺痛它的皮肤，让大象控制大象。所以这个是 Krishna 的足上的标志之一，就是它可以控制我们顽固的、固执的心意。Then there's a thunderbolt. Thunderbolt's another symbol on the lotus feet of Krishna. The thunderbolt. Is to smash the mountain to pieces, because we have a mountain of false ego, and we need that thunderbolt to smash away our false ego. 除此之外，还有它的足足印上还有雷电霹雳的标志，因为我们的甲午就像山一样，这个霹雳可以把我们甲午这座山呢砍成碎片。嗯。There are many different symbols, and each of these symbols are very significant, and they're there on the lotus feet of Krishna to show us that we have to take shelter of the lotus feet of Krishna. And so Akrura rolled in that dust. He took that dust all over his body. And this is the way in which we are encouraged to enter the holy land, to enter into the holy land of Vrindavan. You want to take that dust from the sacred place all over your body. This is what we are going to do. We are going to enter the holy land of Vrindavan. We are going to enter the holy land of Vrindavan. We are going to enter the holy land of Vrindavan. 就应该在尘土当中打火，让这个尘圣地的尘土沾满全身上下。So Akrura came there to go cool, and he went to the home of Nanda Maharaj, and Nanda Maharaj received him very nicely. Lord Krishna and Balaram both came, and they offered the obeisances to Akrura because he was their uncle, and the and they gave him very nice foodstuffs and everything. And they they inquired, you know. We're very happy to see you, but why have you come? What do you want? We know you must have some reason for coming here. So what brought you here to Vrindavan? Akura 就这样就进入到古库了
，来到了难得的房子，他得到了很好的接待。奎什和巴拉拉玛也来了，向他们的救者阿库勒禀拜。阿库勒得到了精美的食物，之后呢，就他们就开始询问阿库勒：“我们很高兴在这里见到你，但是你来此有何贵干呢？” So then Akrura explained that, well, Lord King Kamsa is inviting you to come to Mathura. He's arranged a wrestling match and he's asked me to bring you there. So Lord Krishna laughed. He, of course he knew Kamsa wants to kill him. And Lord Krishna simply laughed about the whole and thought, he said, yes, all right, I'll come with you, no problem. We will leave tomorrow morning. And then this way, the next morning, Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram, they left to go to Mathura. Akura Mm. So, before Lord Krishna and Balaram departed, Nanda Maharaj also decided he will also go to Mathura, and all the cowherd boys, they all went together. And they left also to go to Mathura because they thought, oh, King Kamsa is arranging some festival, wrestling, we should also go. And they brought with them many gifts for King Kamsa. They brought men, a lot of ghee and cheese and yogurt and the different things which they have there in Braja because they are cowherd people. So all of their money is in the products of the cows. Yeah, the real wealth of the world is in food grains and milk products. Who is the richest man in Hong Kong? What's his name? Li Kaifeng. Li Kaifeng. Huh? Uh, so he's a poor man compared to Nanda. Compared to Nanda Maharaj, he doesn't. This Li Kaifeng. He doesn't have cows and milk and cheese and ghee. He's not really a rich man. He doesn't have any cow dung. People with a lot of cows and cow dung, they're the rich people. Of course, when Krishna and Balaram were getting ready to go, the gopis heard about it and they were very upset and they didn't want Krishna and Balaram to go. They tried everything to stop Krishna and Balaram from going. They try. They they lay in front of the chariot and they they try, They pleaded with Krishna and they they were so angry at Akrura. 
that this Akrura is taking our Krishna away from us? He's a rascal. His name is Akrura? No, his name is Krura. <laughs> Krura means cruel. Akrura means not cruel. But this man is very cruel because he's taking Krishna away from us. So anyway, the gopis were helpless, they could not stop Lord Krishna leaving. Lord Krishna, of course, promised them, don't worry, I'm coming back very soon. I'm coming back to you very soon. So this was Lord Krishna's promise to the gopis. So Lord Krishna left with Lord Balaram and Akrura, and they had a nice journey. They stopped to take bath on the way. At that time, Akrura had a spiritual vision. So they got to Mathura and they met with Nanda Maharaj and the cowherd men and they were all together and they thought, let's have a look at the city, let us see Mathura because they had come from Vrindavan and they hadn't been to Mathura before. They thought, oh, Mathura, a big city, let us walk around the city and have a look at this Mathura. So they were walking in Mathura and the first person they met was a laundry man and he said he was the laundry man of King Kamsa. And Lord Krishna saw that this laundry man had very nice cloth. And Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram were coming from Govardhan and Mathura, Vrindavan. And they came to Mathura and they saw that Kamsa's got this very nice silk cloth. And they were coming from Braja, from Govardhan and Vrindavan. They had just older cloth, you know. They're village people. The village people, they, they dress differently from the city, you know. And so Lord Krishna saw the nice cloth and he thought, Oh, can you give some of this cloth for me, for us, you know? You know, when you work with cows, like Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram and the cowherd boys were doing, working with the cows every day, you always smell the cows, you know. And, you know, even though you bathe a lot and you wash your cloth and everything, but still you can always smell the cows. Because 
天就和母牛打交道，所以他们尽管是沐浴，他们的衣服和身上都有牛牛的味道。The devotees, we have a we had this big cow farm in America. They have a place called New Vrindavan, and they have many cows there. You know, so sometimes the devotees from New Vrindavan will come to New York, and they'll come and visit the New York temple. And before they come, they'll bathe and they'll wash their cloth many times, and they'll bathe. And, but still, when they come. You always say, oh, you're from New Vrindavan, I can <laughs> smell the cows. So this Krishna was requesting the laundry man give some cloth. The laundry man became angry at Krishna and said to Lord Krishna, Don't you be so cheeky. This cloth belongs to King Kamsa. King Kamsa will have you killed if he knows you're taking his cloth. <laughs> So Lord Krishna was not very happy to hear these angry words of Kamsa's laundry man. So Lord Krishna just using his hands he decapitated, knocked off the head of the laundry man. And so all the assistants of the laundry man, they all ran away out of fear because they saw their their leader had been killed. So they ran away to save their own lives. So the cowherd boys and Lord Krishna, they could take some of the cloths, whatever cloths they liked, they took the cloths and decorated themselves in King Kamsa's clothes. <laughs> So then they continued in Mathura and the next person they met was a young woman. But this young woman was a hunchback. She had a deformed figure, but she, it turned out she was working also for King Kamsa and she was grinding sandalwood for him. You know, today people will put uh, perfumes and eau de cologne and different things. But in the Vedic culture, people would just simply put sandalwood on their bodies. And this way they'll feel always cool and refreshed and have a nice aroma. So Lord Krishna thought it would be nice to have some sandalwood and so Kubja was very happy to give all sandalwood to offer it to Lord Krishna. Kubja was very attracted to Lord Krishna. She was a young woman and she was attracted to the beautiful handsome features of Lord Krishna. And she immediately wanted to give all the sandalwood to Lord Krishna. Krishna 
于是他就把所有这些檀香香就供奉给了 Krishna。So Lord Krishna took her by the cheeks and pulled her up straight and straightened her hunchback and made her into a beautiful young woman. Krishna took her by the cheeks and straightened her hunchback and made her into a beautiful young woman. Her attraction to Lord Krishna was not like the gopis, but at the same time it was of a, something of a mood like the gopis. The love of the gopis for Krishna is like gold. The love of Kubja was more like iron. And so, you know, she was not on the level of the gopis, but she did desire to love Krishna. 正呢，向来享受 Krishna， 他被 Krishna 吸引，他不是像牧牛姑娘的心态，牧牛姑娘就好比黄金，而 k u s h n a 就像铁一样，但他还是想要爱 Krishna。And Lord Krishna told her, "Don't worry, and after some time, let me. I have some things to do in Mathura. Later on, I will satisfy your desires." And it was arranged. Lord Krishna went there to Kubja's and to Kubja's home, and he satisfied all her desires. Then the next person. Krishna and Balaram and the cowherd boys met was Sudama, who was a florist. He was engaged in making flower garlands. And when Lord Krishna and Balaram came there, he was very happy to decorate them with beautiful aromatic flower garlands. Krishna, Sudama, who was a florist. Krishna 和巴拉拉玛呢，献上了非常芬芳的、美丽的鲜花串成的花环来装饰 Krishna 和巴拉拉玛。And Lord Krishna blessed this florist that, so long as he lived in this body, he would have no material miseries, and at the end of life, he would go back to Godhead. This would be his last birth in the material world. Krishna 祝福苏达玛。Then Lord Krishna went on to the arena where this wrestling match had been arranged, and Kamsa had arranged that there would be this very ferocious, nasty elephant there at the entrance to the wrestling arena. This elephant, Kuvala Yapida, was there, and it had a a nasty elephant. There was a nasty elephant cape keeper, and the elephant was in an angry mood, and it was meant to attack Krishna and kill him. So Lord Krishna, very is the most intelligent. All intel. He knew how to deal with the elephant. Elephants, they can't see behind themselves. You, they can't see what's going on in their back. They have these big bodies and the eyes. Are, they just can't see what's in the, in the back. So Lord Krishna would be behind the elephant, you know, and the elephant could, didn't know where Krishna was. And in this way, Krishna eventually pulled the elephant down and he beat the, the keeper of the elephant and both of them were killed by Lord Krishna. Krishna is very 有智慧的，他就来到大象的身后
因为大象，庞大的大象呢，他看不见他的身后。Krishna 就来到象，呃，背后把他拉倒在地，就，嗯，击倒，呃，打死了这个驯象师还有大象。And then Lord Krishna had to go into the wrestling arena, and he has to meet these very huge, powerfully built wrestlers, Mustika and Chanura and others. They were all they had bodies built like mountains, with you know, and their bodies were all hard as stone, and they were so big. And then Krishna and Balaram, they're young boys. They're not very big, and their bodies are soft. But they were matched. Krishna and Balaram were matched against these huge, big wrestlers. So people thought this is not a fair match. This is not fair. How can these little boys fight such big wrestlers? 我们就进入到摔跤场，就在摔跤场就站着这些身材魁梧的，像山一样，是胸膛就像石头一样坚硬的摔跤手，穆斯提克和查努拉，而库什纳巴拉拉玛呢，只是稚嫩的身身体柔软的身材也不高大的孩子，人们都纷纷说这太不公平了，这个摔跤太不匹配了。But King Kamsa said, "No, no. I I know you boys wrestle every day. You're very expert in wrestling. I know you cowherd boys. You're wrestling every day. No, I know that you can fight these men. Not a problem. Why not? Why shouldn't you? You're very expert. You're very experienced in fighting, wrestling. Every day in the forests, you're playing with each other, wrestling. So I know you're." Very good wrestler. So you fight this man. Then he comes out to show. Ah, I know. You are always playing in the forest. You are playing a game. This is not a problem for you. You are both very good wrestlers. So this match is very good. Then King Kamsa said, "Then he said, 'Then 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 he And they were seeing the content, and they thought, "Oh, this is not fair. Our little Krishna and Balaram—they're just young, small boys. They're fighting these big men." But anyway, Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram went into the arena and fought with them, and they fought with them, and of course they beat them and they killed them. It was all. Pastimes for the pleasure of Lord Krishna and Balaram. Mm. But when Lord Krishna killed these wrestlers and Balaram also together, they killed these other wrestlers. Then Kamsa became very angry. He could not tolerate to see his all of his plans defeated by Lord Krishna. And so Kamsa pulled out his sword, and he started yelling, giving orders that、uh, this Vasudev has cheated me. He told me he would give me his sons. He never gave me this son. He's a liar. He's a cheater. Kill him, and kill Ugrasena also. Ugrasena was the father of Vasudev. He should also be killed, and like this, he was giving these orders to kill all the Vasudev and Ugrasena, and, and he pulled. Out, he had his sword pulled out, and he. But Lord Krishna saw him, and Lord Krishna jumped up, 
and he dragged him down from his dais. Kamsa was on an elevated seat. So Lord Krishna jumped up there and got a hold of Kamsa and he dragged him down. And then he threw him on the ground and he beat him and he hit him. And then he dragged him just to show people that he's actually dead. Because Kamsa was so powerful, people were all afraid of him. They thought nobody can kill him. So Lord Krishna dragged him across the ground to let everyone know he's actually dead now. So, yeah. So, with Kamsa dead, then Lord Krishna freed his mother and father, Vasudeva and Devaki, from the prison. And he apologized to them that he had not been able to help them, that they had been in prison for a long time and suffered a lot. Anyway, Vasudev and Devaki were relieved to see that Kamsa killed and that their child had survived. So they thought that, you know, we're your parents, but we never had the chance to get you educated. So now this is the time you should go and get your education. So Krishna and Balaram went to Sandipani Muni's ashram to learn the Vedic knowledge. And they stayed there for two months in the ashram of Sandipani Muni, which is in Avantipur. Avantipur today is Ujjain. They changed the name. But originally Ujjain was called Avantipur. <laughs> So they went there, they got their Upanaya, the Brahmin thread there, from Sandipani Muni. The, the Vaishya, the Kshatriya and the Brahman are all the twice born. They're all twice born. So they get the sacred thread. So Krishna and Balaram also, they're appearing in the Vaishya family. So they got the sacred thread. <laughs> So while after their teaching, then Sandipani Muni requested them to give Guru Dakshin. And the, he, he asked a very special Dakshin. Sandipani Muni requested them because he knew they were very special students. So he told them that sometime back 
my son died in the sea. He had a he drowned in the ocean. So can you bring him back to life for me? That was the request from Sandy Panimoni. So Lord Krishna immediately went to the ocean and there was one demon residing in the ocean who was apparently responsible for the death of the son of Sandipani Muni. So Krishna went there and killed him and at that time Krishna took the the, the shank from Shankachuta. So uh, Krishna got the, the conch shell from there. So he couldn't find the, the son of his guru, however. So then he went to Yamalok, and he, from Yamalok, he from the from Yamaraj's kingdom, they got Sandipani Muni's son. They found him there, and they brought him back to Sandipani Muni. <laughs> So Sandipani Muni was so happy to get his son back and he blessed Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram. He told them, I bless you that all the mantras and all the knowledge you've learned from me, it will remain ever fresh in you. All the words which you speak will be will be honored forever. So you can see Lord Krishna's Bhagavad Gita is honored forever. So I think we'll just stop here now because we'll have RT in a few minutes and there's maybe some quick questions. Guru had, uh, uh, I have heard that the Kamsa killed his own children, right? The first six children, or their own children in their previous birth. Uh, so, so Vasudeva and Devaki, uh, did they really suffer uh, in the prison? Like, um, of course, they. They might have got, I had an idea that it's all Krishna's arrangement, Krishna's past him. But uh, did they really suffer uh, in the prison or how did they take it? Uh, how did how, they? How did they take the situation? Because uh, um, when Akrura took Krishna, the gopis, even though externally they appeared like they were suffering, but they were having the uh, uh, most extreme love, uh, separation. So, like that, uh, Vasudeva and Devaki, uh, did they suffer uh, in the prison or uh, did they also have feelings of separation or I was thinking like that, did they suffer really? The well, 
We don't hear that there were so much suffering separation like the gopis. Vasudev and Devaki are not on the level of the gopis. They're, their mother and they have the parental relationship with Krishna. So they knew that Lord Krishna is safe, that he's with Nanda Maharaj. So they felt relief that their child is safe. That, that's, per, that's parental rasa. You want to protect the child. The love of the gopis is a different thing. You don't find that kind of rasa among parents. So they suffered in the sense that they were prisoners, they were kept in prison like that, they were not free to move around, so they were restricted, so that was suffering. But they were great souls. Somehow they could tolerate. Hmm. You have, are there any questions here, Guru Mani? Okay, then we'll just finish here because we're going to have to do RT here, 8.30. So thank you, Guru Mani, for translation. Thank you, Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Gaur Bhakti Vrinda ki jai. Recording stopped. 谢谢大家的。